Hi everybody, so today we're gonna to be looking at the veins of the head and the neck. And as you know, veins actually bring blood back to the heart from different parts of the body. The blood gets to the head through the carotid arteries, right? The internal, external carotid artery, which I talked about in another video. And it also gets up there through the vertebral artery. So let's take a look at how that blood comes back down to the heart now, okay? So we're gonna be looking at two main veins today. We're gonna to be looking at the internal jugular vein and the external jugular vein. I'm gonna use blue to show what drains into the internal jugular vein, although a lot of veins will go into both. I'm also gonna use purple to show you the external jugular vein. So again, blue will be for internal, purple's for external, but at the same time, we can, we can get veins that go into both, okay? So we're gonna be looking at a view as if you're looking at me from this angle here, facing that way. So let's go ahead and draw this. And I'm gonna draw the nose here. We're gonna have this come back. An eye, the top of the head. Looks like we're drawing Mr. Burns from The Simpsons here. Okay, this is gonna be my, my mouth. And then the one thing I'm not gonna put on here is where these go once they get out of the head and down into the chest. Um, but we will talk about it, okay? And I'm just gonna draw it down here. So. The first thing we have is if you remember, between my right and left hemisphere, I have a piece of my meninges that go in there called the falx cerebri. And what happens now is that contains blood vessels that uh, veins in the brain will drain into. And that's called the superior sagittal sinus. So I'm gonna draw my superior sagittal sinus. If you recall, it actually attaches to the crista galli at the front of the, at the front of the head, or the skull, I'm sorry. And my superior sagittal sinus is going to come around like this. Okay, and this is the superior sagittal sinus. Okay, now if I have a superior sagittal sinus, I obviously must have an inferior sagittal sinus. So I'm gonna draw it like this, and then I'm actually gonna take a, a break on this. And what the inferior sagittal sinus is going to do is it's actually going to drain the lower part of that um, longitudinal fissure where the false cerebri is. So this is gonna be the top of the false cerebri. This would be near the bottom. I'm gonna leave an opening here because I wanna draw the temporal uh, vein in there. So I'm gonna leave that open. But now I'm gonna have my inferior sagittal sinus come like this. And it's gonna come like this. And then it's going to go straight over like this. So. Really quick, this is my inferior sagittal sinus. Okay, I'm just drawing it here, but remember it's over here also. Let's get that S a little bit better. And then this is going to be my straight sinus, and you can see why it's called the straight sinus. It's because it is straight, so that's my straight sinus. Okay, so there's my straight sinus. So my my straight sinus and my superior sagittal sinus are going to meet. Now, once they meet, they're gonna come down like this, and this is going to be called my transverse sinus. Okay, so this is the transverse sinus that's going to be right here. That's my transverse sinus. Now, you're looking at this from the side, like I said. Imagine you're looking at it like this. You're actually gonna get a little wave here. I'm going to draw this coming down a little bit more. And we're going to get a little wave here. And we're going to call this our sigmoid sinus. So I'm going to write this over here. This is my sigmoid sinus. If you notice, it's S-shaped. And then my sigmoid sinus is going to drain into my internal jugular. Okay? So there's my internal jugular now. Now, here's the next thing that's going to happen is my internal jugular is going to come down. And now imagine we've come into the chest, okay? We've, even though this looks like it's in the neck, this would actually be in the chest. And what's going to happen here is I am going to have a vein from my upper extremity come across here. And if you recall, this is called my subclavian vein. So the subclavian vein is going to meet with this internal 
jugular vein. And when it does, it's going to form a new vein. All right. And again, this would be in the chest. So even though it, it looks like it's coming to the front of my neck, imagine it's coming over this way into the center of my chest. Okay. And this here is going to be called my brachiocephalic vein. So what's going to happen is my internal jugular vein and my subclavian vein are going to meet and they're going to form the brachiocephalic vein. I have a right and left brachiocephalic vein. So I'm going to have the one from the left and the one from the right come together. And when they come together, they're going to form something called the superior vena cava. When they form the superior vena cava, the superior vena cava is now going to go down and go into the right atrium of my heart. So we have that there, okay? So now, that's almost it for the jugular vein, but let's talk about one more thing. As you know, this part of my head is called the temporal region. So we have the temporal region. I'm gonna draw some veins coming together. And here are my temporal veins. Okay, this is my temporal vein right here. It's actually the superficial temporal vein. And that's gonna be it right there. Now, coming out of the face in this region, I am going to get the maxillary vein. Here's my maxillary vein. Okay, and then down in here, I'm actually going to have my facial vein. I'm gonna have my facial vein. And my maxillary vein is going to connect to the temporal vein. And then I'm gonna have my facial vein connect to that also. So there's my facial vein. But now my facial vein is also going to come and drain into this internal jugular. So that's my facial vein also. So like the maxillary vein, it's coming, it's meeting with the temporal vein. And then both of those are gonna kind of drain down into this facial vein. And then I'm gonna get blood coming back from the facial vein into the internal jugular. So if we look at the internal jugular right now, this is what we have. We have the superior sagittal sinus, the inferior sagittal sinus, the straight sinus, the transverse sinus, the sigmoid sinus, draining into the internal jugular, as well as basically the facial vein, which is getting um, some blood from the maxillary vein and the temporal vein. Now, if you notice, I left this blank here, okay? And the reason being is, so like I said, I'm gonna use purple now to talk about my external jugular. So this is going to continue down, okay? And I'm gonna have it drain, go down this way, okay? And this is going to be my external jugular there. Now, here's the thing that's going to happen. I am going to draw an ear right here, okay? And I am going to have a vein that comes from behind the ear and it's going to come down and it's going to come right into here right into that external jugular. So this is going to be my posterior auricular vein. So it's just like it says, it's behind the ear, right? The auricles, the ears, this is posterior. So it's behind the ear. Now, coming from the jaw, Coming from the jaw, I'm gonna draw this up a little bit more. I'm gonna have another vein that comes over also and drains into this external, um, it's gonna drain into this external jugular vein. And this is going to be called the retromandibular vein. Okay, so I have my retromandibular vein and I have my posterior auricular vein are going to come together and they are going to form this external jugular vein. So let me go like this and then just draw a little line here to separate this. This is my external jugular vein right there. 
Now, if you notice, what's going to happen here is my external jugular vein drains into my subclavian vein. And remember, subclavian is going under the clavicle. So it's going to drain into that. Then the subclavian vein is going to continue and meet with the internal jugular. When it meets with the internal jugular, it becomes the brachiocephalic vein. My right and left brachiocephalic veins are going to meet. They're going to form the superior vena cava and drain into the right atrium. So there's a quick rundown of the veins of the head and of the neck. One more that I forgot that's on here is you also have um, one of these sinuses that are going to break off and you're actually going to get the vertebral vein and the vertebral vein goes down alongside the neck. Now whereas the vertebral artery, your vertebral artery carries blood up into the head but for the most part the vertebral vein basically carries blood from the bottom of the head and the upper part of the neck and the muscles in the neck but the vertebral artery would be right here. So I'm gonna draw this in black right here. And my vertebral artery, if you notice, I have it coming across because it's gonna go into the brachiocephalic vein. And I think I keep calling it vertebral artery. I mean, keep, I mean to say vertebral vein. So my vertebral vein is gonna basically collect blood from the, the top of the head or the top of the neck and the bottom of the head. It's gonna go down through my transverse processes of my vertebral vertebrae and it's going to drain into the brachiocephalic vein. Okay, so that's it now for the nerve, not the nerves, the veins of the head and the neck. Thank you so much for watching.